Hello, hello. I am back today to answer a question that I got from one of my students. I'm actually really excited to do this because I made a video recently which was called You Are the Blueprint. And I had a student who waited to see me in person to ask me about that video. Also wanna apologize for this little situation here. I get cold sores and I have one and I'm just not gonna put off making a video for two weeks to wait for this to go away. So sorry, hopefully that's not your focus anyway. Let me tell you this. Basically what they wanted to know is, was I really giving biblical guidance or following the example of Christ in sharing that video? because their question was, isn't Christ our blueprint? And so you mentioned that God said you are the blueprint, but uh, can you just tell me what you meant by that? So my answer to that is sure, absolutely. So I love this question. I love that my student came to me with this question because to me, what I'm hearing is I heard you say something. I want us to have a dialogue about it. I love that they're questioning things because it lets me know that they want a deeper understanding of their faith. So let me tell you, that's the reason I'm going to answer this. This is who I'm not answering it for. Someone who wants to go back and forth with me about theology or a different way of viewing things because God can use different people to deliver a message and not everyone is going to gravitate towards that message or messenger. So I'm not here to defend myself, but to share clarification on what I meant when I made that video and I'm all for that. This is how I want to start off addressing the question, am I supposed to be looking at myself as a blueprint? Okay, so first things first, context is key. Context is key. What I mean is there are many ways you could pull something from what I said in the video and make it mean something that was not the context or interpretation that I was coming with. So I'm happy to come here and clarify what I meant and hopefully it gives you a better understanding. Because no, what I do not want is for anyone to walk away from that video and think somehow I'm trying to make it about myself, put myself on a pedestal, make things about me, and make it seem like I'm on the same level as Christ when he is our, our Lord and Savior and the model that I'm supposed to go by, okay? So I wanna just be clear on that. Second thing I wanna say is I'm not perfect. So if I say something that sounds off, I am always open to dialogue and open to someone giving me constructive criticism, but also I want it to be a dialogue and not someone just saying, oh, you're wrong about this because blah, blah, blah. Well, if you misunderstood what I said, it might be easy for you to think that I'm wrong about something that God did share with me. Um, so let's get started. Let's start with what I said when I was speaking about being the blueprint. What I said in the video is that I have been looking to God to give me this blueprint, this map of where he wants me to be, where he wants me to go. And, and this is coming from me having very specific questions about the next direction in my life, okay? So it was just me wanting to know that I'm following what it is that God wants me to do. And in wanting this blueprint of him to like give me something. So literally think of a blueprint and, and let's take a look at what that actually means, okay? So a blueprint is literally a design plan it's a, a, a model of something. So if we just look at that, we could kind of stop right here and say, aren't we supposed to be a model of something in this world? Yes, we are modeling after Christ. But as we model after Christ, aren't we supposed to try to mimic his ways, be like him and be a model to others of what it means to follow after Christ and ultimately be in the will of the Lord, our, our Heavenly Father. And so if you just look at it, at it that way, which is what I was meaning, then yes, we can be used as a blueprint, as a model. And so I don't want you to get thrown off by the terminology. Maybe it's not a word that God would have given you to use, but it's what he gave to me because I was asking specifically like, well, where's the blueprint for this? Like, I just don't see this. And what God was saying to me in that moment is you're looking for something that I've already placed on the inside of you. I've already given you something and you think it's going to come from out here, but I need you to understand that I've put something in you 
that you need to go after. That also brings me to another point of us being the blueprint is simply us doing something new that we may not have seen before. And yes, absolutely, our Heavenly Father uses many of us to do something new, just as he did with his son, Jesus, to do something in this world to propel us where he wants us to be in his bigger picture of his kingdom, okay? And so when God uses us as a blueprint or shows us something new to do, that is us being used as a model of what is possible when you surrender to God. So the example that I gave to my student in person, um, the two of them, I gave Moses, who was definitely used as a blueprint. He did something that had not been done before. God gave him directions. He didn't always give him exactly every little step, but he's like, go back to Egypt. I need you to do this. I need you to say this to Pharaoh. And Moses is like, what? Like me? Why would you use me to do this? But God is saying, I'm using you to do something new that you haven't seen before for the purpose of setting my people free, for the purpose of showing my glory. And that is what I'm getting at when I say that God will use us as a blueprint. He might need people in our family to see us walk in our faith in a way that we haven't before. He might need people in our family, whether that's our children, our siblings, our spouse, whoever, even our parents, to see us do something that none of them have done before to show them what is possible. Another example of someone in the Bible that God used as a blueprint is Noah. Noah did something new because rain had never fallen like that before. And God said, I need you to do this. And he literally did give Noah a blueprint because he allowed him to know the measurements and the materials and all of those things to use to build this ark, something that he hadn't seen before. Now, Noah didn't exactly know the end result. He just knew that he was supposed to do what God said and it would lead to the ending that God wanted. So that's where we are when I talk about the blueprint, that God will use us to do things that we haven't seen before. And it's never just for us. It's to build our faith up. It's to get us outside of this thinking that, you know, how do I do this if I don't have all the answers? No, like God has placed everything that we need inside of us, okay? And so I hope that that makes sense, what I'm talking about and giving those two examples. Those were the two prominent ones that came to my mind as I thought about individuals that God gave a blueprint to and even used as a blueprint. And I, I hope they make sense. If you have some examples, leave them in the comments below. Let me see who you're thinking about. So yeah, I'm trying to figure out if there's anything else I want to say about that. I'm trying to think back on exactly what I said in the video, but yeah, God definitely spoke to me and told me like, you are the blueprint. And what he was saying is what I'm, what I'm using you to do and what I'm telling you to do is nothing that you've seen before. <laughs> You haven't seen your family do certain things that I'm about to tell you to walk into. You haven't seen people walk this path or this calling in the way that I'm asking you to. And so for that, God can use me as a blueprint, as a model. He is the he's the potter okay and I'm in his hands and he is molding me to exactly what he needs me to be. That is a similar analogy to what I'm getting at with this blueprint. He's using me as a blueprint, but it's literally for his glory. I'm not taking any shine or anything away from Christ or anyone. Christ is the head of my life and he is who I'm following. So if we're supposed to model after Christ, then I don't think it should be any surprise that God could also use this as a blueprint. So I hope that answered a question. Um, and if it's OK, let me go into another vein here and just switch over to something else. For people who may have seen the video and you want to take it in a totally different direction or make it seem like I'm saying something that I'm not, here's what I'd want you to know. God is really trying to get us to break free from this religious mindset. OK, so this religious mindset of oh, we're not supposed to say this or do this or even are women even supposed to say this and do this? And so if you're coming from that kind of background and thinking or you have a legalistic way of walking out what you call Christianity, then I can just tell you right now, we wouldn't really be, you know, vibing too well. We wouldn't be on the same page because God has called me out of a religious mindset. I grew up, you know, with many thoughts and um, teachings that were 
under this religious category. And as I grew in my adulthood and in my own walk with God, separate from my parents and my family, God had to do a lot of undoing in me to get me where he wants me to be. So if you're someone who still falls under this legalistic view of how things should be, then you're really not going to receive anything that I say because God doesn't use me in that way. And that's okay. That just means I'm not a voice of someone that you should listen to. There are people who still have a problem with women even teaching or sharing the word. So if you go to a church where women are not allowed to speak, women don't say anything, women can't leave an abusive marriage, women can't walk away from a toxic situation, if any of that is in your line of thought, you're not going to be able to receive from me or hear what I'm saying because you're going to constantly try to look for a flaw. Well, you, you, you do this and you know, you're not wearing a dress when you speak. And I don't know, whatever it is that people say and do, we just not going to get along if that's the kind of person that you are. And again, this is separate from the question that my student asked me, but I feel like I need to address that here. God just wants to know that you are open to new revelation, that you are open to new ways of looking at things that he presents to you. And he does do that. Yes, God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The word is God's, you know, instructions for us and to us. I really hope y'all can't hear that dog that's barking outside of my neighborhood right now. It's getting on my nerves. But anyway, what I will say is God wants us to be able to receive fresh revelation when he speaks to us. And I simply gave you all a fresh revelation as I received it in that video. Okay. So when we read the word, it should be fresh revelation to us, especially depending on the season of life we're in, what's going on with us. Like God wants us to receive fresh revelation. So I would just say, how about you take the word back to God? pray to him about it don't be quick to say that wasn't God or this wasn't from him take it back to him and see what he says and when you grow in your relationship with him you will know the ways that God speaks to you and he'll be able to answer your questions again I'm not going to address um, a lot of negativity when it comes to this but I just want to be clear that I there's nothing I want more than to please God absolutely nothing when my kids ask me things that I'm afraid of, I'm like not following God's plan for my life, taking matters into my own hand, not fulfilling my call. Like that's what I'm afraid of. And so every decision that I make is always rooted and centered in my relationship with Christ and me wanting to walk out this deep calling that I know is inside of me and that I have, I have felt my entire life. In doing that, I am not going to be everyone's cup of tea and I'm okay with that. All right. Someone left me a comment the other day um, saying, you know, there are over 50,000 starving kids in such and such place or 15,000. I don't know what they said. Where's your God then? Or something along those lines. Where is God? And it's like, it's so crazy because I ain't gonna lie to you. Sometimes I want to say something, not to argue though. Like I, I'm not trying to argue. Like I want to literally give a response because I'm like, oh gosh, like I hate that that person is thinking like that. They need, but that person is not there to get understanding. That person is there to argue. And so God had to even in that moment say, I know you want, you think, you want to make a response so that you, that you can tell them that this is a world where people have free will and that the reason that there's evil in the world is because the man has fallen and there's sin in the world and that, that allows people to make choices and not all of those choices are good. But I'm not going to go back and forth, nor does God want me to waste my time as I prepare to minister in whatever way that he wants me to on people who just want to go back and forth. So again, video was made to address a question and I will welcome any question that any of my students or any of you have regarding the things that I share because I want this to be a dialogue. I want to share with you and for us to have a conversation. That's what this is all about. That's how we learn and grow. And I'm not too good to answer anyone's question, nor do I think that I'm per so perfect that I can't be called out on something and provide clarification. So I just hope that it did that. I hope I was able to share something with you um, that helped you understand where I'm coming from. But at the end of the day, God uses us as a model, as a blueprint, just as he did with Christ. Like, so as we model after Christ, God will then use us as a model in the world to, to raise a standard of what it looks like to be a part of his kingdom.
I have been and choose to live a set apart life, it doesn't make me perfect by any means. But I choose this life. I'm not doing this for clout. I'm not doing this for for popularity. I'm not a Christian to be a part of some social club where a lot of people are. I'm doing this because I literally feel like this is what God wants me to do. And if nothing else, it allows me to just kind of have an outlet for the things that God shares with me. And so again, always open to a dialogue and just let me know what you thought about this. Let me know if it answered any questions. And if not, I will try again. <laughs> but until next time, I'll see you later.